In this next module, I'm going to tell you about the tests that are used to compare means between more than two groups or more than two time points. I'll start here with the one-way ANOVA test. This is a test that's used to compare means, continuous outcomes, between two or more independent groups. The t-test was limited to two groups. The ANOVA can actually handle two or more groups. Actually, the t-test is a special case of an ANOVA. And remember, the t-test and the ANOVA are both special cases of linear regression. So really, you could apply, if you had two groups, you could apply an ANOVA. But if you have more than two groups, you have to apply an ANOVA or a linear regression. Let me just start with an example here. Imagine we have a hypothetical trial. We randomized 33 subjects to three groups. Uh, 800 milligrams of calcium supplement, 1,500 milligrams of a calcium supplement or a placebo pill. And the outcome here that we're looking at is spine bone density. We want to see if at the end of the day, uh, the most supplemented group ends up with a higher spine bone density. This is some hypothetical data that I've made up. We're going to compare their spine bone densities uh, at one year, assuming that all three groups started with roughly the same spine bone density. And here's the results from my hypothetical data, showing you some box plots. The placebo group is a little bit lower than the 800 milligram calcium group, and that's a little bit lower than the 1500 milligram calcium group. So it looks like there's some increase as you add more and more calcium supplement to the diet uh, in terms of spine bone density after a year. How do we determine whether or not the differences you're viewing here are statistically significant? This is where a one-way ANOVA would be useful. How do I get to a one-way ANOVA? Okay, I'm going to walk you through the logic here to get to the right test. The question is, is there a difference in final spine bone density in the three treatment groups? What's the outcome variable? It's spine bone density. What type of variable is it? Well, it's a continuous variable. Is it normally distributed? Yes, I'm telling you that it's normally distributed. Of course, you would need to, to do some legwork to, to figure out if it was normally distributed. But you'll just have to trust me that I tested it, uh, and it does follow a normal distribution. Are the observations correlated? No, we have three independent groups. How many groups are we comparing? Well, we're comparing three groups here, so a t-test is going to be insufficient. So that's why we're going to need a one-way ANOVA. How does the uh, ANOVA work? Again, ANOVA is really mathematically the same as a t-test, so the assumptions are the same. We're assuming that we have a normally distributed outcome. Again, the ANOVA is really robust against this assumption, and as long as your sample size is big enough, in fact, the central limit theorem kicks in and so this assumption really matters for small samples. We're also assuming equal variances between the groups. The way that the analysis of variance is computed is that we are always using a pooled variance. There are some uh, variants of ANOVA that you can find that uh, allow for unequal variances. Uh, but the standard one-way ANOVA, when you go into your computer, will assume the variances are equal. It will pool the variances. So we want to check on that. Also, uh, one-way ANOVA assumes that the groups are independent, so this is analogous to the two-sample t-test. Now, you might ask a question here. Why wouldn't I just, I've got three groups, why wouldn't I just run multiple t-tests? The t-test, everybody's comfortable with the t-test. Why wouldn't I just run a t-test that compares the placebo group to the 800 milligram group, and the 800 milligram group to the 1500 milligram group, and the 1500 to the placebo? Why wouldn't I just run those three tests as t-tests? Why do an ANOVA at all? It's a fair question. And the reason is, is that remember we learned last week that when you run multiple tests, you increase your type 1 error rate. Instead of running one test here, you'd be running three tests. And if these were independent comparisons, of course they're not independent comparisons, but it's very hard to, cal to, to figure out exactly how, uh, what this probability I'm about to calculate is if you don't an assume independence. Well, I'm going to calculate this probability assuming independence. It might be slightly different because they really we don't have independence here. But if these, these were three independent tasks, each one of those tasks has a 5% chance of a type 1 error. So what's the chance of it making at least one type 1 error? That's going to be 1 minus 95% raised to the third. Using our little trick in probability, 1 minus the probability of none is equal to the probability of at least one. So we have roughly somewhere around a 14% chance of making a type 1 error. That increases our type 1 error rate if we run all those three pairwise tests. The ANOVA, on the other hand, runs just one test, just calculates one p-value. It's called a global test because it's looking at all those comparisons essentially at once. So the null hypothesis for the ANOVA, for the one-way ANOVA, is that the means of all the groups are equal. So like the mean spine bone density in the placebo group is equal to that in the 
800 milligram calcium group is equal to that in the 1500 milligram calcium group. That's our null hypothesis. The alternative is just that the null isn't true, that at least one of the means is different. Notice if you reject the null hypothesis here, it does not tell you which groups are different. It only tells you that some one of those groups is different. At least one of those groups is different. So this is a global test because it gives us kind of an overall, a single p-value to tell us if there's any difference here. But it doesn't tell us specifically where those differences lie. It's good for controlling the type 1 error though because it's only testing that single hypothesis. And here's the general idea of an ANOVA. I'm not going to walk you through the exact calculations of the ANOVA. If you want to be walked through that, I have, an op I have some optional material on it uh, for you. Uh, but I don't think it's important to be able to calculate an ANOVA by hand. We never calculate these by hand these days. But here's the general idea. <clears throat> if I have three groups, say, and I want to compare the means for three groups, I, can, I could do three pairwise t-tests, but as I said, this would increase my type 1 error. So what I want to do is actually to look at those, the difference in means, those three differences in means, all at once. How, what's a way that I can look at multiple differences at once? Actually, the variance. The variance is a statistic that looks me, lets me look at more than one difference at a time. The t-test only allowed me to compare you know, one difference, one difference in means. The variance allows you to compare multiple differences in means at once. So the ANOVA is going to involve, it's called analysis of a variance because it involves calculating variances. It involves what's called an F-test. So I want to know, is the difference in the means of the groups the difference in the mean say of the three groups, is it more than the background noise? It's more than the variability within groups. It turns out there is a distribution, a test, that compares the variance between groups to the variance within groups. So we can summarize the variance between the groups. That, that represents the differences between all the groups at once. That, that variance, we can compare how different the groups are between each other to sort of the background noise, the variability within the groups. And this denominator here is analogous to the pooled variance from a t-test. So if we just say how much variance is there in spine bone density within each of those groups, that represents the variability of spine bone density. Does that, does the between group variance, the difference between the groups, does that exceed that background noise? That's the idea of the ANOVA. And the an ANOVA is also called an F-test because a ratio of variances follows a distribution called an F-distribution. Just for fun, I'm just showing you the F distribution. It's yet another distribution. We've seen a T distribution. We've seen a Z distribution. If you have a ratio of two variances, that follows something called an F distribution. And it depends on two sets of degrees of freedom, a numerator degree of freedom and a denominator degree of freedom, because the variance in the numerator has degrees of freedom. The variance in the denominator has degrees of freedom. This forms uh, different shapes depending on those degrees of freedom. So, that's why when you see the results from an ANOVA test, you're going to see the, an F statistic. It comes off of an F distribution. Ratios of variances, which is what we're looking at here, follow an F distribution. The F test tests the hypothesis that those two variances are equal. If the variance between the groups is equal to the variance within the groups, that suggests that the groups do not, ver do not differ in their means. If the F um, is close to 1. That suggests that uh, there's no difference in means across the groups. However, if the F is very far from 1, that would suggest that there is a difference in the between group variance from the within group variance. In other words, that there is more difference between the groups than within the groups. That would suggest that there is a difference in the means across the groups. And that's the general idea of an ANOVA. Again, if you want the details of the mechanics of it, that is going to be optional material. I just want you to understand the general idea here. So let me just illustrate that, going back to our spine bone density example. The within group variability is represented just by the spread of these box plots. So that's kind of the background noise in spine bone density. How much variability in any given group is there in spine bone density? And we're assuming that that variability is kind of the, roughly the same across the different groups. Remember, we have an assumption of equality of variances here. Well, it's, it's close enough. They're, they're pretty similar. They're not exactly the same, but pretty similar. We want to know, does the difference in means between the groups exceed that kind of background noise, that variability within the groups? So the between group variance can be represented by looking at the means of the three groups. Those are, the means are represented as plus signs here. Is the difference in the means of those three groups, does that exceed the background variability? That's what ANOVA is set up to answer. And I'll walk you through a brief calculation here. And again, I don't expect you to be able to calculate these on your own, but just 
understand the concepts here. So here are some numbers to, to work with. The placebo group has 11 people in it. The mean spine bone density at the end of year one was 0.92, standard deviation is 0.1. For the 800 milligram group, the mean was 0.94, the standard deviation is 0.08. For the high calcium supplement group, the mean is 1.06 and the standard deviation is 0.11. Notice that the variance is the standard deviation of spine bone density is roughly the same across the different groups. It's probably just fine to pool them as you, we do in an ANOVA. Here's how the F test works. So again, the F test is just a ratio of what we're calling the between group variance to the within group variance. I'll walk you through how these are actually calculated in this particular example. Again, don't worry so much about the details, just understand the concepts here. So the between group variance, we calculate by subtracting, first of all, we have to calculate an overall mean for spine bone density. So the means in the three groups were 0 0.92, 0 0.94, and 1.06. The overall mean, therefore, is 0.97. We're gonna compare the mean from each group to the overall mean and then we're gonna square it, add it up, divide by three minus one. Notice we're just calculating a variance here. This is how we calculate a variance, but our observations here are the means. We're calculating a variance for the means of the three groups. But that's what we call the between group variance. Obviously, if that's big, that means there's a lot of difference in the means between the three groups. So we calculate that between group variance here. It comes out to be 0.063. We then calculate the within group variance. All that is, is the average of the standard deviation of bone density or the variance of bone density in uh, each of those groups. Remember the standard deviations were 0 0.10, 0 0.08, and 0.11. We square them to get the variance and then we just take the average variance. That's the average variability in bone density within any given group. That comes out to be 0 0.0095. The F statistic is just the ratio of those two variances. When I put those together here, it comes out to have an F statistic of 6.6. .6. If I took that F statistic to an F chart, I have to plug in, I have to tell uh, the computer, the chart that I have uh, numerator degrees of freedom of two, denominator degrees of freedom of 30. I can get a corresponding p-value. The p-value does come out to be highly statistically significant here. It's something like 0 .00, less than 0 0.001 because under the null hypothesis, the F should come out to be one, 6.6. Uh, definitely exceeds that. Again, don't worry too much about the details of this test. All of this will be calculated for you by the computer. Just get the, ver the basic idea here. Now we get this statistically significant uh, ANOVA here that tells us that at least one of the groups differs. It doesn't tell us which ones differ. If we then want to answer that question about where those specific differences lie, we would then have to go in and do some post hoc tests, some actual comparing specific groups. But because we are comparing multiple groups, we then have to correct for multiple comparisons. I mentioned last week that there are ways to correct your p-values for multiple comparisons, and you could apply those corrections uh, to account for the fact that you're doing multiple t-tests. Here are some of the names of some of those tests that you might have available, you might see in the statistical analysis program. Here's how to correct for multiple comparisons if you want to do all those pairwise comparisons and figure out where the differences really lie. The most common one that everybody's familiar with is something called a Bonferroni correction. It's very easy to, to apply. You're just basically dividing your p-value cutoff of 0.05 by the number of tests you run to make a more stringent cutoff for statistical significance. Bonferroni is very conservative, though it's usually overly conservative. 